In the 1960s, Dr. Konstantin Radive developed a technique to communicate with the dead. Born in 1909, the Latvian writer and intellectual dedicated his life to parapsychology and the afterlife. Under the guidance of Carl Jung, Radive worked as a professor at the University of Uppsala in Sweden. However, after the Soviet reconquest of Latvia, he was exiled from his home country during the Second World War. Subsequently, he collaborated with German parapsychologist Hans Bender on the project, which would eventually generate this creepy voice sequence. Radive stands next to his recording device. How it worked. Radive would ask questions and record the static interruptions in the ensuing silence. This is electronic voice projection, or EVP, a technique commonly used among ghost hunters to this day. Radovid's first EVP allegedly picked up his recently deceased friend, Margarita Petrotsky. She spoke of the great beyond in her native German. As the story goes, he was listening to a recording one night, where multiple voices were picked up. It was only after playbacks that Radovid deciphered her voice. Although he grew somewhat accustomed to the variety of voices speaking in multiple languages, it was hearing Margarita's voice that shook him to his core. A woman's voice says, quote, Go to sleep, Margaret. <laughs> Later, Radivier would write about the voice, stating, quote, These words made a deep impression on me, as Margarita Petrovsky had died recently. Her illness and death had greatly affected me. The voice showed up in later recordings, calling out for Zenta Marina, her former boss. Later, Radivier's work expanded to recording the voices of those who apparently communicated through the vocalizations of animals. In his later years, Radivier continued exploring EVP's possibilities, collecting over 100,000 tapes and studying them with over 400 experts. His magnum opus came in the form of his 1968 book, What is Inaudible Becomes Audible, also known as Breakthrough, where he explains the voices of the dead. Spiricom. In 1980, psychic enthusiasts George Meek and Bill O'Neill, pictured here, developed Spiricom, short for spirit communication. Spiricom was a device, one that used sound waves as a carrier signal of the voice of any willing disembodied human who spoke from the dead. At the time, Bill O'Neill claimed to have received instructions for the device from George Muller, a scientist who had been dead for 60 years. Allegedly, O'Neill's abilities as a medium brought him into contact with the scientist. At a press conference in Washington, D.C. on April 6, 1982, O'Neill claimed he could hold two-way conversations with any deceased through the Spiricom. He sampled the device to other researchers for free. Heard here is one of O'Neill's frequently alluded to conversations with the long-dead scientist George Muller. Yes, sir, I understood, Doctor. Despite numerous attempts, scientists have still failed to replicate O'Neill's supernatural results successfully. Apparently, only a true medium can go where science cannot, bridging the gap between the living and the dead. Well to hell. In 1989, Russian scientists purportedly bore a hole in Siberia so deep that it reached hell. Led by a Mr. Azakov, scientists made a disturbing discovery while venturing into the abyss. After drilling 8.9 miles, 14.4 kilometers, the engineers broke through a cavity where temperatures reached at least 1,830 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,000 degrees Celsius. They descended a microphone into the hole. What followed was this audio, 17 terrifying seconds of what appears to be the wailing of souls. Many workers, frightened by what they'd heard, fled the site, swearing to never speak of the incident again. The tape's origin remains an area of dispute. Despite appearing in international newspapers, the story was eventually dropped. Yet some suspect the event is linked to an SG-3 hole at Russia's experimental Kola Superdeep Borehole, now welded shut. Some conspiracy theorists claim the Vatican and other religious organizations worked to silence the details of the discovery to prevent widespread panic. 
The Kola Super Deep Borehole Project began in the 1970s near Murmansk, drilling over seven and a half miles down into the Earth's crust. Supposedly, if a person were to fall down into it, it would take between three and four minutes for them to land at the bottom. Notwithstanding, they'd explode from the heat before dying from impact anyway. While the extreme temperature forced Soviets to discontinue the project, they made several significant discoveries before the project's end. Researchers located water 12 kilometers underground, something considered impossible beforehand. They found 24 types of long-extinct single-celled organisms on rocks dating back about 2.7 billion years. As for where the whaling came from or how it was generated, science has yet to explain. Enfield Poltergeist In 1977, Police were called to the home of Peggy Hodgson, a single mother living in Enfield, England. Reports made by two girls, ages 11 and 13, claimed that mysterious, possibly demonic voices were heard throughout the house. They described further unexplained noises and even levitations. They attributed the strange goings-on to poltergeists. Peggy claimed that loud knocks on the walls woke her up one night. She described furniture moving of its own accord. The eldest daughter, Janet, claimed the supernatural entity possessed her body, causing her to levitate and speak in a deep, gruff voice. Over the following year and a half, journalists, acquaintances, and neighbors confirmed other bizarre events within the house. During the police investigation, few investigators could rationalize how a chair could move across the room by itself, and a wobbly one at that. Researchers Maurice Gross and John Beloff recorded audio of a supposed conversation with the poltergeist, later identified as Bill Wilkins, a man who died alone in the home before the family moved in. Investigator Guy Leon Playfair reported, quote, curious whistling and barking noises coming from Janet's general direction, but he believed the house was genuinely haunted. Famous demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren paid a visit to the house. They agreed the only explanation was supernatural. Still, not everyone was convinced. Paranormal investigator Playfair agreed that an entity had taken over the home. However, he recognized that the precocious girls often engaged in suspicious behavior that indicated they may have invented the whole thing. Members of the Society for Psychical Research debate as to whether the haunting of the Enfield home is real or a product of girls' imaginations. Many remain unconvinced and point to Janet's behavior, supporting the idea that it was a hoax. Some go as far as to suggest the poltergeist premeditated these actions as part of a broader attempt to discourage the attention the house received. Supposedly, his only goal was to bask in the realm of the living a little while longer. Some suggest that the girl's behavior was less a result of possession than embedded trauma resulting from distressing events that adults found hard to accept. Even in this interview, Janet maintains the recordings were real and that to this day can't explain the events in her home. Sleep as Android. In late 2014, Reddit user Red Wants Blue 80 posted an unexplained audio recording from her Sleep as Android app. Pulled out of REM sleep, the app's sleep monitoring function recorded something eerie. Contextualizing the situation, the Redditor wrote, quote, On December 30th at 2.04 a.m., I caught something very weird. To set up, this night I was sleeping in my bed. My three-year-old was with me that night as he's scared of the dark. It was just the two of us in the whole house. The next night, I decided to go through and delete my recordings and saw this particular record. Bizarre clicking noises can be heard. Then, still unconscious, she asks, What are you doing? A ghostly, unidentified male voice replies, Nothing. What the voice says next is still contested. It's often heard as either, I'm dead, or that's them. She stated in her post that she does not recall being awake at the time. Some suggest the clicking was an intruder rifling through her belongings, but when she woke up, nothing was missing or even out of place. Others believe that the clicking indicates electromagnetic interference coming from a ghost. In a follow-up, she posted that things seemed normal after the initial scare. Quote, I've caught no more voice recordings since then. Also, as suggested by several people, I beefed up my home security, changed locks, that kind of thing. Since then, I've had no more weird voice recordings, but there were one or two more instances of the clicking noises waking me up at night. <laughs> 